Hi all, Violet here, second generation homeschooling mom of three. I have an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and an infant. And today I wanted to share with you our family subjects for the upcoming school year. So let's get into it. So the first subject that we do as a family subject is social emotional learning. I did these card sets with both my kids when my daughter was in kindergarten and my son's entering kindergarten this year. So we're going to do them again. I really like these sets. This one comes first. So the way these cards are set up, is there's a picture on the front and then there are discussion questions for you to read to your kids on the back and then you kind of discuss what's going on in the picture. This next set is very similar. The situations are just a bit more complicated. So it's kind of the next level up. They're a bit busier and the questions are a little bit more complicated. They require a little bit more analysis. So my kids really enjoyed these when I did them four years ago. <laughs> so well, I'm looking forward to doing them again now that my kids are a little bit older. So those cards are kind of for my son, although both my kids will enjoy doing them. This next resource, again, we'll do all together, but this is geared more towards my daughter and it's the Big Life Journal. This is the old edition and this is the new edition. And I think they just have different stories and pages and everything. So they don't really seem to have much overlap. So I don't know if I'm going to have the, my daughter do these as a journal or if I'm just going to read aloud and have her do the exercises orally. I'm kind of leaning more towards that just because I'm not sure she'd really be into the journaling prompts that are in here, but we'll see. And then if we finish all of that and still have time in our year, we'll read this Adventures of Molly and Kilo. This is a secular virtues book. So the authors identified virtues that are important in a wide range of belief systems and cultures and they're all distilled in these stories each story has four virtues that they talk about and at the end of the story there's discussion questions for each of them so i read this book when my daughter was in kindergarten to both of my kids so it's a good time to revisit it now that my son's going into kindergarten we really enjoyed it last time i'm sure we'll enjoy it again now that my kids are older this is the last thing for social emotional learning. Aesop's Fables, they seem to be a kindergarten staple everywhere. My husband grew up in Columbia and they did Aesop's Fables in kindergarten. I remember doing Aesop's Fables in kindergarten. They're on a lot of curriculum lists. I have this book. This actually was my book when I was a kid. I like the pictures in this book. I don't love the way the stories are written. I feel like they're a bit dry. So I'm probably not actually going to use this. I'm probably actually going to use Jim Weiss's Aesop's Fables CD. We really like Jim Weiss's story CDs. And so I think those will be a little bit more interesting for my kids. Plus then we can do them in the car instead of adding one more thing to our morning basket. The newer edition of this does come with an audio download that I don't think it has all the stories. It has some of the stories. So you could listen to them that way if you really like this book. The next thing that we do in our morning basket is poetry. I have two videos where I go over all of the poetry resources that we've looked at and used. This is our main one though. So I've talked about this book a bunch. We love this book, Sing a Song of Seasons. This is the main one we use and then we'll pull in other resources if we're getting tired of reading this. So I'll link those videos down below if you're interested in looking at all of those. For science, I like to do science reading in our morning basket. My daughter does Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding. My son will start BFSU in first grade. He's not gonna start it yet. So if I, we have reading that goes with a BFSU lesson, we'll do that in our morning basket. If we don't, we'll read from a nature book. My daughter said this year, and my son too actually, they said that they wanted to learn about ocean life this year. And so I was looking for an ocean picture book and I came across Pegu by Holling C. Holling. I know a lot of people love his geography books. So when I checked them out of the library, I was not super comfortable with some of the racial stereotypes, but I haven't seen anybody complain and I haven't seen any problematic things in this science book. So this follows the life of a hermit crab and the illustrations are really nice. The text is a bit long. Um, it's broken up into pretty short sections, but each day is just a little bit like wordy or something. It's written in a style that my kids are not as familiar with, I guess I should say. So I hope they like this. I think it looks really cool and I'm excited to start it. It's fairly short though. So once we're done with this, we can move to the Burgess Bird Book for Children. Again, I don't know if my kids are going to like the style that this is written in, but I really like birds. So I'm excited to do this. I actually bought this to do this last year and we didn't get to it. So we'll see if we get to, the, to it this next year. And then we also do read alouds together as a family. I haven't chosen any of our read alouds for next year yet, so I don't have anything to show you for that. I am going to try to do health as a family subject this year. We have used Sanford Fit just for my daughter in the past and I like it, but I don't want to repeat it. So I found this resource online, Kids Health, that has different levels of health subjects, but it covers tons of topics. You can choose the order you want to do them in. And I think I can pretty easily choose a topic and then 
teach it to both of my kids at the same time to kind of cover both of their things. The only thing that my daughter will do individually that won't be part of the Stanley subject is I'm going to read through a book on puberty with her, Celebrate Your Body. The last family subject that I have for now is music. Eventually when my son is older and we have completed our first four year cycle of history and we're back in ancient times, history will also be a family subject and I'll give my kids differentiated reading and assignments. But right now my son is too little and he's kind of sensitive so we're gonna wait on history for him. He'll just do the social studies in his fish tank ELA units. So music is our last family subject. And so for music, I always think about how there's kind of three parts to music. There's music history, music appreciation, and then music practicum, I guess you could say, like the skills and techniques for making music. So for the past few years, I like this last year we used Carnegie Hall and that kind of had all of those parts in it. The year before that, we used a child's introduction to the orchestra which had the his and ballet, which had the history and the appreciation. And then my daughter took online classes from the Great Bend Center for Music. They're free online music theory classes. They are five days a week for 30 minutes for 10, three 10 week sessions each year. They're completely free, but they are a big time commitment. So my daughter did one session and that was enough for her. But in that one session, she learned all of the solfege hand signs and she learned most of the basic rhythm patterns. So since she already knows that, and I did choir when I was a kid, so I can probably relearn very easily all of those things. I think we are actually going to do folk song analysis or folk song study as our practicum portion. So we'll read one section from this each week and listen to whatever song it has us listening to in here. This book has QR codes for the songs. And then for our practicum portion, I'll choose a folk song. I looked at a bunch of different folk song books and I think what I'm going to end up doing is pulling from Wildwood's folk song rotation. I may end up using some things from Ambleside online as well, but in general, I like Wildwood's song selections better, so I think we're mostly going to pull from that. I also want to incorporate some Colombian folk songs as well, so we'll see if I can find sheet music for all of this stuff, because I really want to include the solfege syllables and everything, so I will need sheet music to do that, because I cannot do that on my own. So we'll see how that goes. My idea is that we'll work on singing a song for two weeks and so the first week when I introduce it I'll introduce it first with the solfege syllables and hand signs and then we'll sing it every every school day and then the next week we'll work on rhythm stuff either with the song or maybe other rhythm exercises if the rhythm in the song isn't very interesting I don't know music is not really my thing one of my homeschooling friends studied music education in school so I was picking her brain the other week about how I could do this reasonably as somebody who doesn't have a background in this and she gave me a lot of really helpful advice and materials so I'm going to be setting up more on that to kind of lead this on my own because I do want it to be practical and help my kids develop their singing skills. So that's what I'm gonna try to do for music this year. And those are our family subjects. I hope you found this helpful. I will link everything in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you click on an Amazon link and make a purchase, I will receive a small commission. Thank you for watching.